Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a little bit better on this morning. God is good and greatly to be praised.
shall serve them till you die. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Don't die and not serve them. Yeah. And don't spiritually die while you pretended to serve them. Yeah. But if you promise him that you'll serve him until you die, yes. that means you got to keep kicking even when you don't feel like kicking. Yes. I wish I had some kicking in the house. Amen. 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 God is good. Yes, I am. God is good. This has been one trying to eat. Yes. And I would that uh, you all just stand in prayer with with me and, and our sister congregation yeah. as, well, I don't want you to stand. Oh, no. <laughs> stand, stand with me, amen. <laughs> let, let, excuse me, let me clear my throat. <laughs> as we, uh, we have experienced a uh, great loss, one of my ministers over at the other church has passed on. And the amazing thing is she was supposed to speak today. Today was her Sunday assigned to speak, and uh, I was at the hospital with him Friday from 12.45 p.m. until 12.30 a.m., and uh, the family lost it because she was, she was the pillar of the family. She, she was the one that kept the joy of the Lord in the house. She Amen. was the one that was the light to the world that world that they lived in. She yes. was the one that kept the family together. Yes. And um, she went in for a procedure, and in the middle of the procedure, something shifted. Mm -hmm. And what I try to encourage everybody about is, heaven knew and told her, mm -hmm. because she was getting her house straight. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And the last thing she told one of her friends was, the way I've walked and encouraged people, you've been with me, she said, you, you got to take over because I'm getting ready to go into the hospital. Amen. So she knew at that moment, I'm going in, but I'm not coming out. Mm. Not the way y'all think I'm coming Amen. out. Amen. And I tell everybody, I said, she was supposed to preach today. And then I had to think about it. I said, she preached already. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Her favorite, favorite saying was, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. She preached, to God be the glory. And then it was so amazing so I was sitting there and the Holy Spirit said, didn't I die on Friday evening? Mm -hmm. And she tried so much to be like me. Yes. Why was it funny that she died on Friday evening? Yeah. Amen. He said, the difference is I got up so she didn't have to get up. All right. Amen. Come on, girl. So her, her soul left. She had already, he was standing right there in the hospital waiting for her. He said, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And she left on her body here. But the family is taking it really hard. The husband, once he got together, I teased him because he, uh, he's 60, 62, 63, something like that. And he took off walking because he was trying to get his head together. But I wasn't going to let him walk by himself. It's nighttime. We were Long Beach. And the police is looking for a reason to mess with you. Yes, yes. So I'm walking with him. I got my, my briefcase on. My briefcase added about another 30 pounds. <laughs> I had on some Crocs. He didn't have no shoes, no socks. And he was stepping. And I, I looked up and I was like, he's half a block in front of me. I'm running to catch up with him. And I used to think I walked fast. And he stopped and sit down. I was like, Lord, thank you. <laughs> And as soon as I started getting away, he'd get up and take off again. And I, you couldn't, I didn't want to say nothing to him because I wanted him to get it out. We probably walked about a mile. And then when we got back, I just went and sat down somewhere. And, and so when he started feeling better, I told him, I said, boy, let me tell you something. He said, what? I said, don't you ever ask me to walk with you. <laughs> and then I told him, I said, I'm canceling my 24-hour membership. And I'm coming to Scotty Williams. <laughs> He worked me out of leg and so I got my ankles. My, my ankles need a respirator. Right? <laughs> but they're they're doing they're they're hanging on now. And then one of my other, she, she used to be the church secretary. She had open heart surgery the same day. She's having some challenges. I got a call this morning. Her lungs have collapsed. One of her lungs have collapsed. So they're trying to get her. She's she's giving up. We know that we are living in a time where we have to fight. Yeah. Amen. And then she has a brother that's in a hospital across the city 
that's in a worse condition than she is. Mm. And so we have two of them. So I want not just prayer for them, but prayer for the spouses yeah. that are standing and trying to be strong yes. in this. Yes. Amen. And it's a heavy weight, but you know yes. what? God says that he is a burden bearer. Amen. Which means if we give it to him, he's faithful enough to carry the load for us. Amen. He says, when he says that, 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 that the burden may be heavy, but the yoke, the yoke is the thing that's easy around our neck. It's mm. around our neck. But he said he'll make our burdens light if we can trust him. Yeah. Amen. 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 So I, I just kind of try to work myself into a gooder. I'm, I'm being country now, a gooder space. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm trying to work into a gooder space. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm all right. Amen. I'm all right. So Amen. I'm supposed to still be on vacation, but... The Lord said, I got to go and stand today Amen. Um, to encourage. Yes. So what I want to share with you real quick is this. We got to love today because we're going to guarantee right. tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You have to love today because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take it for granted that you're going to be mad another day. Yeah. Forgive and ask forgiveness today. Yes, yes. Lord. Because if God says today is your day or today yes. is their day, you can't change that. Amen. And you can't go and, and say, Lord, give me a little bit more time. It, it don't work like that. Amen. Amen. So when he says we must work while it is day, Amen. part of that work is making sure that we right our wrongs. Amen. 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 I know it's tight, but it's right. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And I just want to share with you today. I'm going to keep you along. I want to share with you from the book of Numbers, if you can go to the book of Numbers, and then while you're getting there, I want to make sure that we talked on Wednesday. On Sunday, the fifth Sunday, we are going to do friends and family. Amen? Amen. Everybody got quiet. It's almost like I'm wondering if anybody got friends. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do friends and family. Amen. If you have not given Mother Maddie the size for your shirt, please give her the size for your shirt. Amen. You're going to rock. Yeah, you see your grow shirts. Amen. Amen. But I need your size to make sure you got it. And uh, I want you to invite somebody. I want you to invite. I'm, I'm going to say this. Don't let the pastor bring more folks than you give to y'all. Amen. 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 Because I get a street sign. Stand on the side. People be thinking I'm asking for change. And I ain't. I'm asking for friends. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you want me. Amen. He's selling oranges, flowers. What are you doing? No, I just get to both come to church. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Let us fill the house. <clears throat> Let us do <clears throat> the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Meet me over in the book of Numbers. Amen. Chapter number 12. When you have it, you stand to your feet. If you're looking for it, stand to your feet. If you're tired, stand to your feet. If you have feet, stand to your feet. If you don't have no feet, borrow some feet. Whatever you do, Amen. just stand to your feet. Amen. What I'm going to do for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole passage, but this whole passage is what we're going to talk about today. But what I want us to look at is, let's look at verse number 8. I'm sorry. No, let's look at verse number nine. The Bible reads, The Lord's anger burned against them, and he left. Verse 10 said, And the cloud moved away from the tent. Miriam's skin suddenly became diseased, resembling snow. When Aaron turned towards her, he saw that she was diseased. She was leprous and said to Moses, My Lord, please do not hold against us the sin we have so foolishly committed. Please don't let her be like a dead baby whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes out of his mother's womb. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, God, please heal her. Verse 14 says, the Lord answered Moses, if her father had merely spit in her face, wouldn't she remain in disgrace for seven days? Let her be confined outside the camp for seven days after that, she may be brought back. So Miriam was confined outside of the camp for seven days, and the people did not move until Miriam was brought back in. For a few minutes, if I can use as a subject right now, is stay in your own lane. Stay in your own lane. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I don't know what your lane is. I don't know what your lane is. But stay here. Father, we thank you now. We thank you now, God, for this opportunity to share your word. We ask you to speak now. Speak clear. Allow, Father, to go into the hearts, the minds, and the souls of those that are here. And let it be something that will shift us in the direction that you would want us to be. And then make sure that we have the right permits to stay in our own lane. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. What I find to be interesting simply is this, that we have so many people, especially, especially, I can say this where I am because of where I am, especially in the church, we have so many people that believe that they are more qualified than they are to do things that they haven't been qualified to do. Have I got a witness? And the crazy part is, qualification does not come because another man or woman told you that you are. But in the house of God, the qualifications come. It's already been predestined before time because that's what the Bible says. Everything about you has already been predestined. So if God has called for you to be in a position, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you do have and what you don't have. The call came from heaven, so therefore the qualifications came from the qualifier. Simply means that it doesn't matter what man says when God puts you in position. He said it, that settles it, that's, that's it. Right. Amen. 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 But we got folks in church that have been, especially when we look at the role of preacher, we got folk that look at the role of a preacher and they go to school and half the schools they go to ain't really teaching Bible, but because they got a Bible name on it, they go and they get a piece of paper that they got off the internet and put a couple of seals on it and, and they're running around with these big old crosses on hanging all the way down to here and they <laughs> all this stuff on. Amen, somebody, Amen. because what they want to do is they want to look, they're looking at a glamorous side. Come on, I want y'all to catch this. They're looking at a glamorous side of what they believe a preacher is without realizing the job, the role, and, and, and the things that a preacher has to go through. Are you listening? Amen. The same Amen. thing with women that want to be first ladies. I want you to understand being a first lady means a whole bunch more than just having on a pretty dress and hat. Folks sitting up saying first lady, she yeah. got on some sparkly shoes, baby. When you think about what that first lady got to go through in the middle of the night is to keep that man yeah. uh, stable, to keep him prayed up. When you think about how she gets talked about by other women in the church, she got to smile while you talking bad about her. Amen. You got to make sure that you know how to drive in that lane before you try to push her out that lane to take her place in that lane. Because if you haven't been qualified, then I come by to tell you, you are driving illegally. Amen. Amen, somebody. And I found out you get tickets driving the wrong lane. Has anybody ever been in the carpool lane without nobody in the carpool yeah. with you? And you got a big ticket? Why? Because it's illegal yeah. to be someplace yeah. and it's supposed to be. So when we look at this particular story, we look at this particular story because we find out now that as Moses has begun to lead the children of Israel through and to the promise, we find that remember from the very beginning when Moses told God, he says, I can't, I can't talk well. Mm. And God told him, he says, well, I'm going to send your brother with you because your brother can understand you and you can understand me. Yeah. And y'all got that? I want you to catch it right, right, right from there. I want you to catch it. He said, I'm not sending Aaron who can speak well mm. because this assignment is not Aaron's assignment. Yes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Aaron mm. to who I assigned. Uh. Yes. To make sure that the, that the assignment gets fulfilled. Amen, amen. Aaron's job is only to give them what I gave you, mm -hmm. since what I gave you, you don't believe you can speak it to them for them to understand. So I'm going to put him in the middle of me and you. Because what I say to him, he says to you, and you say to them. Amen, amen. And my job is done. Yes, yes, yes. So what God did is he established right there what the lanes were when it was time to go back into Egypt. Are you listening? He didn't say, Aaron, you speak when you felt something. No, he says, you speak when I speak to Moses and Moses speaks to you, yeah. then you speak. And until then, you just listen. You just watch. You just pray. Because your job is to do what you've been assigned to do in order. Because listen to this. If, if, if a car, can I use an example of a car? If a car, listen, if the wheels of the car decide to do what the motor is supposed to do, then the car ain't going to do nothing. Amen. Yes. 
Amen. Yes. 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 If you put gas where the, where the oil go, you're going to find out she's going to need a new engine. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Try to put your seats on the top of the car and see just how far you're going to go. <laughs> but rather, there is a lane for everything in your car in order for the car to effectively move to get you to where you need to go anytime you get in it. The same thing goes with the body of Christ. God has assigned us certain lanes, and if we all stay in the lanes and operate the way we're supposed to operate in our lanes, we'll get to where we're supposed to go a whole lot faster, a whole lot more effective, and then when we get there, we'll be in position to do more rather than always having to call the spiritual AAA. All right, all right, all right. Don't you know AAA died coming to get to church? <laughs> Come on here, somebody. I believe AAA going to call and say, you have run out of calls. Yes, yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. So, so we find here that God had assigned Moses to go and talk to Pharaoh. And he told Aaron to go with him so that as he speaks, that Aaron could give more or less interpretation of what Moses was going to say through God and allow for the work and the will of God to be able to set the atmosphere and do what God has called for it to do. Are you listening? Amen. And so now we find them as they're moving through the wilderness. We're looking and we have Aaron, which is his brother. Now listen, not only was he somebody that was going with him to speak, but Aaron was also appointed as a high priest. One of the highest that there could be while they were moving. Listen, listen. He was a high priest. He had some Jews. Are y'all with me? Mm. And it wasn't generic. Y'all better catch this. Yeah, it wasn't. He had some. He had some. He had some Tropicana on him <laughs> type of Jew. And so Miriam herself, she also had some Jews. Yeah. And now they were rolling together, and they all had to. But as they were beginning to move and do the things that they were supposed to do, God was moving through them. Everything was effective. But isn't it amazing that we as people have a tendency to where we want to find something? to connect to somebody to justify our reason for talking about them. Yes. Amen. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes, Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mike, it's amazing because, watch, I'm going to pick on you today just because I like you. <laughs> it's amazing because if all of a sudden Mike did something that I felt like I wanted to be mad at him about, but I couldn't go to him about what that was mm -hmm. that I was mad at him about. I have to find something to open up the door to justify my reason for being mad, yeah. and then I can cover up the reason why I'm really mad. Amen. Are you amen. listening? Yeah. So I come in here and say, Mike, yo, 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 your pants got a better tear in it than mine do. <laughs> now I'm mad because I've been wanting my jeans to look like his jeans, but every time I do that, my jeans rip all up. So now I say that that's my reason for being mad at Mike. But that's not my reason. My reason for being mad at Mike is I want to do what Mike does. Amen. But instead of me just going and asking Mike to help me do what he does or realizing that maybe my job is to assist Mike, my thing is I want to put him out of position by putting my mouth on him to make him believe that he's less than what he was or that I'm more qualified. I went to school. Amen. Amen. I, got, I got degrees in what you do. It don't matter what you got. If that's not your call, then that's not your lane. And this is what you does. So now we find that Miriam and Aaron, and it's a trip because when you read this, you find out they said Miriam's name first, and it ain't because ladies first, but it was because she had the most influence. And she goes and tells him, Aaron, hold on a minute. We got a problem with that wife that he married. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Basically what happened is, remember, at this particular time, the Bible says that Moses had married a Cushite woman. And if you look at this, it was supposed to be that he had married this foreign woman, but there were stipulations that says that if they were a certain way, that it was okay for them to marry. Amen. So they knew that, but they didn't want to stand on that. They wanted to hold on to the fact that he married a foreign woman. He's telling us that we're not supposed to do that, but yet he's doing that. Baby, if you're going to tell the story, tell the whole story. Are you listening? Don't give me some french fries without the salt and tell me that they're good. Come on, somebody. Well, I'm a ketchup kind of person. Don't fries and don't give me no ketchup. We're going to have a problem. Are you listening? Don't give me no chicken without no hot sauce. Come on, somebody. Who's the bread? Who's the fans up in here? Come on. I need to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So therefore, listen, they're mad because they say that you're marrying this old, old woman. But their problem was simply this. Their problem was because
because they talked about it. Hold on a minute. Mm. Is God, is he the only person that God speaks to? Yeah. Is he the only person that God can use? No. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. The bad thing about that is this. Your problem is you want to be what he is and you're avoiding being what you are. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Listen, I got a couple of points and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out your way. I got a couple of points. I got a couple of quick points. Point number one, I want you to write this down. When we are doing this thing about being in our own lane, this is something that you got to do. First thing you got to do is you got to identify your own lane. Mm. You got to identify your own lane. Miriam, listen, Miriam, she don't realize just how important she was to the assignment that Moses had. What are you talking about, preacher? Miriam, if you're listening, Miriam, being his older sister, was the one God used to help spare his life so that he could even be where he was in the first place. Mm. If you look at this in Exodus, you'll find out that when the decree came for all of the young boys to die, when the decree came, Pharaoh said he will kill up all the young boys. Remember, when Miriam and, and Moses' mother put him in a basket and pushed him down the river, Miriam was the one that walked along the side of the river. Miriam was the one that got him. Miriam was the one that took him to Pharaoh's daughter. So therefore, God used her in a way to help to, to, to sustain him until the time that God was ready to use him. Watch this. And isn't it amazing that because of what she did, Miriam went and took her to, to, to Pharaoh's daughter, but Miriam's mother was assigned to take care of Come on here, somebody. When God sets it up through something in your obedience, God will fix it to where it work out just right. How is it that the boy was supposed to die, but the sister caught him, the sister gave him to the one that put the order out to kill everybody, and then she got him, fell in love with him, and then called his mama. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Without knowing that was his mama, to raise him up. So watch this. I am in captivity, supposed to be. But God has taken me from the pool. He's put me in the arm of the princess. And the princess has taken me to the palace. And I ain't got to be in the palace all by myself. Because he's going to let my mama and him come up in here too. I wish I had a win. Mama and him get the blessing that you got. Why? Because when God uses you to do something, it's not about how qualified you are, it is about how obedient you are. You got to identify your lane. But it seems as if that time went on, Miriam seemed to forget about where it all started at. And if God really wanted her to be in that position, then he has the, he has the, the capability of putting her there. But watch this. She was the one that walked along his side. So he allowed her identity in what was going on in this to be established right there. Her job right there was, no matter how big Moses got, continue to walk by his side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you listening? Because the longer you walk by his side, though you don't have to now get him out the ocean, the, 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 the river, though you don't have to go and take him to the, the king's daughter, though you don't have to go and get your mama, but you still got to make sure that you send the prayers to heaven and you might see some things that's coming behind him that he'll never see. Your job is to walk alongside of him and pray his strength in the Lord. Yeah. Pastor West, thank you, man. Listen. I called Pastor West this weekend, Friday, and I told him, I said, man, I need some prayer, bro. I, I'm going through some stuff. Yeah. And all he said is, he said, I got you. Every once in a while, he'd check in. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Everything all right. Listen, I didn't need him to do anything this weekend but just walk beside me. Yeah. And whether he saw me or not, if he was in tune with my spirit, which is the same spirit of God, he was able to understand this is bigger than he is. My job was just to call and hold him up to let him know you got somebody on the other side that's praying with you. Are you with me? Yes, 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 Lord. So Miriam's job was to do that. Aaron's job was identified when God says, I'm going to send your brother with you so that he can interpret on my behalf. He's going to let you know. So in other words, Aaron, Miriam was supposed to rock by his side. Aaron was supposed to be there to 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 to, uh, 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 to interpret if that was necessary. So their important their roles were important. But yet, I want you to understand that every once in a while, you can get bigger than your position. Amen. Your pride Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Your position. I've got a witness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like me coming up in here and saying, "You ain't got to play this Sunday, but I got it." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and service won't go too much, maybe ding, ding, ding. <laughs> because I haven't been called to be what 
what you are, but because you make it look so good, I believe I got what it takes to come. And look, look, and I'm gonna move you out the way. But God says your lane ain't on that keyboard, so you need to stay out of that lane before you wind up causing an accident. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to identify what your lane is. Miriam and Aaron got to the place to where they began to see how God began to move on Moses. And so now they get to the place where they believe that they can do it better than me. Amen. Have y'all ever been with some people that you rocking with them and it seems as if they always thought that they were better than you and everything you tried to do? Are you with me? I I'm having myself a little adolescent flashback. I remember when I was in elementary school. That was just three weeks ago. Oh, right God. God. And I remember when we used to get down there on the kickball guy. You know, the kickball. Hey, man, my face started doing this thing. We got down on the kickball guy, and we always had a goal. We had a goal. We had a goal, Josh. We had a goal where, where the kickball diamond was. There was a big fence down at the back. So we wanted to see who was able to kick it over the fence. And then we had a contest where if your leg was strong, you could kick it all the way over the fence with no problem. And if your leg wasn't that strong, you'd have to click it over in one hop. Are you listening? So you had to kick the ball and it hop and it go over the fence. We got in trouble for the ball going over the fence. But we didn't care. It was a competition. Are you listening? And it seemed as if whoever was the best kicker, everybody decided that they wanted to kick the ball farther than the other person. Are you listening to me? And, and, and not until right now, I'm standing here because I still didn't realize it. Then that moment, I, I was having that movement right there. Where I was like, I want to be the farthest kicker. But my mind right now is saying this. It wasn't even about kicking the ball over the fence every time. Because what happens if there's a whole bunch of people on the base and I go and kick and it don't go far enough and then we get out and now we have to go on defense instead of the option, the option to be able to win on offense. Are you listening? So somebody got to be the person that just helped sacrifice. That's right. That's right. That's right. Everybody can't be the king. Everybody can't be the chair. Everybody can't be. Watch this. But if I'm on the team that's got the greatest kicker and he kicks it over the fence, as long sacrifice and get somebody home. Yeah. I've done my job. And when we get to the end, everybody gets the same prize. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hey, because you, you might get MVP, mm. but our bonuses is going to be the same. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Your bonus check ain't going to be no bigger than my bonus check. Yeah. You just got one more trophy than I did. Yeah. But I'm going to sit back and look and say, as long as I was a supporting factor yeah. to the championship title, that's all that matters to me. Because my ring is going to still say I was a champion. My chick is going to still say I was a champion. And it don't matter if I was just a water boy. It don't matter if I was just a second or third player in. It don't matter if I was a town boy. I still contributed to the fact that we won the championship. All right, all right, yeah. Yes, yes. So when I identify my lane, then I can be the best I can be in my lane. All right. Have you all seen them water boys, them town boys at basketball games on TV when you see them? And anytime there's a little bit of water on the floor, they don't walk out there like this. They run. They run out there and they wipe it. And you, you would think they're getting a million dollars every time they wipe the floor. It ain't that. You know what it is? They take pride in their lane because they understand if I don't do my job well here, a player comes down and slip and fall. He may break his ankle or anything. And then that's a part of my job because I didn't do my job well because I wanted to be him. And now we all wind up missing out. That's right, that's right. Because I wanted right. to be more than I was assigned to be. That's right, that's right. The other thing, once we identify our lane, Mother K, we have to identify it. Some of us don't like it because it ain't black for us. Come, come on here, somebody. Some folks don't like their lanes because it's not glamorous. Okay, yes, God says that you're the person that's supposed to come in the church and clean the toilets and buy the vacuum. You don't want to do that because people don't see you wiping the clean. People ain't got to see what you do to know that it's done. And as long as it's done, God gets the glory because your job is not for man to see or to glorify you anyway. I wish I had a witness up in here. But what you ought to do is come in here and make sure that you got the piney, freshest pine saw that you can get. You got to make sure that you got you some nice smelling corporate to put on the floor. You need to make sure that when you down there washing the pans because you enjoyed the grits that came up out of it, so you be washing the pans that you smiling and enjoying and saying to, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. And Lord, blessed is the name of the Lord. You need to be washing them pans and saying, 
Lord, I thank you for all the things that you call for me to do. And everything that I touch, God, let it be filled with your love and your anointing. That when somebody else come up in here, they don't feel that I've been here, but they know that you are here. Yes, 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 yes. All right. You know, you should remember that commercial when it says, whistle while you work. <laughs> you need to be up in here whistling, back in yes. these floors. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And matter of fact, you can even dance if you want to. Yeah. 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 And then we know if I have some flashbacks. <laughs> but you've got to have an attitude of gratitude no matter what your lane assignment is. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. And if you never make it to the lane that you so desire, as long as you're the best you in the lane that you've been assigned, you still get the same benefit as if you would have if you hadn't been the one at the head. All right, all right, yeah. Because watch this. My head hmm. can never stay stable if my neck and shoulder wasn't in position. All right, all right, you can tell the truth. Folks, don't think about your neck. Yes. But you need your neck to, to help you do it. That's right. Are you listening to me? That's right. So it doesn't matter. People, pe people don't believe. Let me tell you the truth. People overlook the pinky toe. Hmm. <laughs> but cut it off. Amen. And watch how unbalanced your body yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the pinky is the smallest thing on your feet. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's the strongest thing because it's helping sustain your balance. Yes. And if it's gone, now the other four toes have got to work harder to do the one job of the little bitty pinky that does what? Helps with the support of the body. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be a pinky in the house of God. Yeah. No, let me go. Let me, let me get more specific. I'd rather be a pinky toe <laughs> in the house of God <laughs> than to be the whole foot because I understand my job. I may look little, but my job is way bigger than what it physically looks like. Right. And my job is to support. So what does that mean? Pastor, you're doing a good job. My job is to support. So what does that mean? Mother Kate, you play that organ, girl. My job is to support. So what does it mean? Mother Maddie, do you need me to come in and do any cleaning up for you? Yeah. My job is to support. So I should be able to know the needs of the house and not have to be told to do them, but do them because that is the will of God. And after we identify our lane, mm -hmm. the next thing you got to do is you got to know your reason for why you're in that lane. Amen, amen. I just told you a few minutes ago that pinky toe, the reason that pinky toe is where pinky toe is. is and next time you stand up, I want you to try that. I want you to just lean to the left and lean to the right and watch that pinky toe dig in. Yeah. Amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Because the pinky toe has been designed and is automatically, listen, it automatically responds to the shifting of your weight. Amen. You don't have to tell your pinky, move pinky toe. Okay. Shift your weight, watch that pinky toe dig in. Yeah. Because it's supposed to make sure that it puts enough pressure on the ground and, lift, and, and, and then send the signal to the rest of the toes to do what? Make you stand correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you walk. When you walk, I want you to pay attention. Watch, people are walking down. They're going to be like, they're going to be like, my toe is my toe is digging. I never realized that before. But walk and see. And then think about if that toe wasn't there. You would go from walking straight to walking yes. like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Until you've trained the other toes to do the job of the one that's missing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's why every church needs a prayer warrior. Amen. That's why every church needs a worship leader. Yes. That's why every church needs some people behind the scenes. Yes. Why? Everybody can't be out front to yes. for the church yes. to move good. Because yes. somebody got to be praying when ain't nobody else looking. Yes. Amen. Everybody want to be in the front to be seen. Who in the back watching who can sneak in the back? All right, all right. I remember when God told me, he says, don't you ever put your mind on believing that you're supposed to stand in front of three or 4,000 people as your membership. He said, because if everybody had thousands of members, who will go in the neighborhood and preach to those that don't feel like they want? Amen. Amen. He said, you a pinky toe. Mm -hmm. And I said, to God be the glory. So yeah. now, I identify. I know what my reason is. I know what my reason is to be in the lane that I'm in. Sometimes we have these troubles and we can't figure this out. But if Miriam had a thought just for one minute, God used me to help save this boy's life. God has used me now to be in position to walk with him, to do what? Be an example of the, the way a godly woman is supposed to be. And also give the pure essence to let you know that women don't have to sit down and be quiet if God has put you 
you in the power and the position of authority that you can do that as long as you stay in your lane. Don't get out your lane trying to do what you haven't been called to do and believe that God is going to bless it. I want somebody. Amen. 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 There are too many people that they got too many folk in church. Can I say that? Amen. They always got something to say. You ain't got no faith. You ain't paying your tithe. You don't read your Bible. But you always got something to say. And when you got something to say, it's always at the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit is moving and you get up and say something. And now somebody be like, what in the world is going on up in here with you? But you all, why don't you read? Your job is, you a praying mother? Pray. Yeah. Yes. It didn't say say, it said pray. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You've got to know why you're in that position. Yeah. And the reason why you're in that position is because when God gives everybody assignments, he gives you assignment and he connects it with something called purpose. Yeah. Yeah, but if you can't see God for what your purpose is, mm. then you'll never identify what your assignment is. Amen. And if you never identify what your assignment is, then you're always going to be in somebody else's life. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> There'll be Sundays when nobody be coming on the drum. There'll be Sunday, I'll be sitting right here, and I'll play the drum. And I want to get up and get on the drum. And look, sit back and say, Set out! I didn't work you this big place. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Are you listening? <laughs> and the way these young cats play right now, I, they shame me to play. Amen. I'm still on the team. Take it. I don't need to do drum rolls with the foot pedal. You know I'm all. <laughs> I say all that to say this. If my ego mm -hmm. was bigger than my purpose, yes. then I would miss the atmosphere of every single time mm -hmm. trying to do what they do right. when that wasn't my call. That's Amen. right, that's right. So if y'all good at what y'all do there, and I stay focused on what I do here, Amen. the machine works good together, Amen. and God gets the glory from the whole Instead of us struggling and somebody missing it because somebody was out of their life. All right, all right. There are so many times that the, the, the Spirit of God moves in the church and it stops because somebody got out of their lane. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit flows when everything is unclogged. Hallelujah. But the moment something gets clogged up because he's he's a gentleman, he'll back off and let you do it your way. Yes. Yes. Because you wouldn't get out of your way to let him have his way. All right. Are you with me? But the moment you get out of his way, yeah. then he'll have his way, yeah. and then you'll find out that your way is the way to do what he says to do. Wow. And when it's all said and done, we all get our way when the God comes down and blesses us yeah. because our way should be the way to heaven. Yeah. Our way should be the blessings of God. Yeah. Our way should never be a blessing, but it's hard for us to be a blessing if we're in the wrong life. Yeah. 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 Are y'all with me? Yeah. 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 So we got to identify our purpose. Then we have to identify what the reason is why we're in those lanes. Yeah. Aaron's, on, Aaron's only job was to just interpret. Mm -hmm. Now when he got to the place where they were losing the battle, Aaron's mm -hmm. job wasn't to interpret. Mm -hmm. But Aaron's job was just to hold. Mm -hmm. right, right. He said just hold up. Amen. And you can't hold up both hands. Amen. He said your job is to get on one side mm -hmm. and just hold up one. Yeah. I wish I had a few errands in here that understood uh, uh, what I can like say. I may be a holder or I may be an interpreter, but whatever it is, I'm going to be good at what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my reason for doing it is because God has given me this as my assignment. Yeah. And since he's given it to, to me as my assignment, I know that when I stand before him, I need him to say that I did a good job. Amen. I don't care what man says. Man can be mad at me for what I'm doing, and he can call me a flunky, and he can call me a donkey and a hunky and everything else. But as long as I got my flunky for Jesus, I'm going to be because at the end of the day, Jesus is the one that needs to be satisfied yeah, that I've completed right. my assignment in the lane that he's called me to be in, yeah. and I did it with a spirit of joy and expectancy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Amen. So you got to know why. Then the third point is simply this. You've got to accept your lane yeah. and the importance of your lane. Yes. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. What is what's so important about you cleaning some toilets and vacuuming some floors? Mm. Because somebody got to come in the church and use the bathroom. Amen. Yeah. And the church can be talked about if your praise is good and your bathroom's are nasty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to be practical with you. Yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. How good are you as a praise church and you come in here and there's water bottles and, and, and stuff all on the floor? And and because and, I'm telling you, if you got enough of that junk on the floor, you probably got more than people in here praising God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Then when you got one of them critters with a long tail, four feet of the junction. Like, oh, come outside. First thing you do is that church got rats. Amen. 
They miss what God is doing in the church because they can't get around. The, the, the Bible clearly says to us that cleanliness is next to godliness. Come on here. Hallelujah. And he's not just talking about a spiritual cleanliness. He's talking about on the outside too. You cannot call yourself a child of God looking raggedy and acting raggedy. I don't care if you ain't got much of nothing. If all I got is two pair of pants and two shirts, every time I get out, them two pair of pants and two shirts need to be clean. If my shoes got holes in them, at least they're clean with holes in them. Are you listening to me? I don't care what I got. If I know that I'm doing the best that I can do with what I got, I'm showing myself to be faithful over a few things for God to make me ruler over much. So if my church seems as if it's sitting on the side of a hill with one nail holding it up, I need y'all to know I'm going to wipe that one nail down. I'm going to sweep around the little wood that came down because when you walk up in my raggedy church, you can feel the cleanliness of God's love. Because I'm doing it recently. Mm. And in order, my job as an usher is important simply because when people come in, they go through the eyes or the windows of the usher Amen. to try to identify the fabric of the church Amen. all the way to the pastor. Amen. And Amen. if the pastor lets somebody raggedy at the back door, Amen. then he must be raggedy himself. Amen. I Amen. wish I had somebody Amen. in here. Yes. The reason why deacons are so important it's simply because deacons are the front line mm. of the church. Yeah. And the deacon has to make sure that being the front line, that they are not just protecting the pastor, but they have to protect the needs of the church. All right, all right. I wish I had somebody. All right. And if a deacon is here, his prayer has got to be lined up with his position. All right. Because sometimes his prayers will cause folk to get to a good place before the preacher even stands up to preach. Amen. Amen. But it's bad when a deacon is standing here and his life Saturday night Ooh. was seen by somebody that's in church on Sunday morning <laughs> and where he was was not at a Saturday night. Hallelujah. I wish I had a witness. Y'all know a few deacons <laughs> like that. You see them and every time you see them, they got a pocket full of one dollar beans. <laughs> And made to put into the offering plate for Saturday night. And you couldn't see them. And some of them come to church on Sunday morning. And they still got the change and smell of Jim Bean. Come on up here. And they always talk about pastors saying, we got to keep a pocket full of peppermint. Because we never know what he going to need. No, I don't need the peppermint. You need the peppermint. As a matter of fact, you need Jesus. And you're coming up and get a smell of like some Jim Bean or something. I, I wish I had a witness. And so therefore, sometimes the deacons have to pray for folk before the pastor even gets an opportunity to pray for folk. But if you're coming up and you're smelling like yesterday, I don't know if my spirit is going to be right enough to even be close to you because I don't want them spirits jumping on my spirit. Come on, I'm not a witness. So therefore, the importance of a deacon is this. You've got to, the qualifications say you got to have one wife. you got to stop tipping around Peggy's house because somebody lived down the street from Peggy and they see every time you come in Peggy house and then they see Sister Deacon and they not Lord, I wish you knew what was going on. But as a deacon, your life is just as important as the pastor because when folks see you not doing right, the first thing they believe is that the pastor is doing the same thing. And I come by and tell y'all this one thing. I loved it my life. I love my life real good and real much. And I come by and I tell you as a pastor, we find these little cute childs coming up in the church, sitting in the front with the dresses all high, thinking they finna attract a pastor. But I come by and tell you that I rebuke your cute self real quick in the name of Jesus because my assignment is bigger than how cute you are. And if you were supposed to be my wife, then you would already be her. And since you're not and I already got one, God bless you. Do you need some prayer? And just so you know, I'm not the one that's going to lay hands on you. I'm going to call the one you're trying to replace. Baby, come and lay your hands on her because she needs to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I feel this thing right now. So a deacon's position should be that he is wholesome and that his job is to make sure that he's on the front line. Because when the church is over, I want somebody to say the deacons was on point, the, the ushers was on point, the, the musicians was on point, the finance team was on point, everybody was on point. And it was so on point that they helped point me to the person that helped me get past. Stuff that I was going through. And so now I need you to 
understand that the choir members are important. Yeah, you sing praise the songs of Zion, and sometimes your prayer, your ministry and song can set the atmosphere for the word that has to come forth. But when you up in here and your cleavage is all out, the man that needs to be delivered can't be delivered from evil because he's sitting up there looking at them twins. He can't say hallelujah to the song because he's saying hallelujah to what he's thinking. I wish I had somebody. That's why in the old days, the choir couldn't be in the choir stand unless they had on a robe. Because they didn't want nobody to be distracted by the way they were dressed. And now we got folks in the choir stand with shirts down here, pants ripped up here, shirts tight, and, and folk can't get into the worship because they're trying to figure out how to worship. I wish I had somebody. Hey, I, ooh, girl, that girl look good. But your mind should be on how good that girl look. Your mind should be on how, how good God really is. But if I'm out of my lane, come on here. I'm causing everything else to suffer. And I look here now when we get down to the end of this, we find out that now God says to Miriam and to Aaron, he says, come here, come here, come here. But he didn't call them without calling Moses too. Are you listening? He called all three of them. He said, y'all come here, y'all come here, y'all come here. And then the Bible says that he came down in the form of a pillar of smoke. Are you listening? In other words, he was setting it up to tell them exactly what he needed to tell them for them to understand the importance of them being out of line. Are you with me? And therefore, he says that he stood there and he called them and they came forward and he asked them a question. He says, what makes you feel so comfortable putting your mouth on me? Uh, and because when you put your mouth on him, you really put your mouth on me. Because I'm the one that called him to be where he is. And while you talking about him, you are yet talking about me. I wish I had a good day. My initial name for this message was get your mouth off of me. But I didn't want somebody's mind to drift them out the wrong lane. Because Kyle sometimes makes people mother start thinking the wrong kind of stuff. But since I'm here, I'm going to tell y'all, get your mouth off of me. The Bible tells me in Psalms 105, touch not thy anointed and do thy prophet no harm. And God makes sure he let them know. He says, y'all put your mouth on the man of God, the one that I've assigned to do this job. And now y'all have the audacity. You've walked with him and seen my power. You've been with him and seen how good I am. You've understood how I've turned situations around through him. And you've been important walking with him. Now what makes you think that you could be him? I didn't qualify. He said, matter of fact, let me tell you something. He said, the prophets of God, he said, I come through and I speak to them, or I speak to them in mysteries and this and that. He said, but this servant, I want y'all to catch that. He called the other ones prophets, but he called Moses his servant. He said, my servant, I speak to face to face. And I need y'all to know that there's nobody else in the Bible that he said he spoke to face to face. If y'all don't believe it, watch this. The Bible says that when Moses had left out of Egypt and was hanging out with Jethro, when God was ready to send him back, the Bible says that he came to him in the form of a burning bush. And if y'all don't understand, it was God looking at him face to face because he identified it was God because he said that the bush was on fire, but the fire wasn't consuming the bush. I wish I had somebody. Uh, uh, Pastor West, can I stay right there for a second? Uh, the reason why some people want to be what you are, because they come in and see the fire burning on you, but they don't see you burning up. And they sit back and say, hi. Uh, without burning up. Well, when they think about it, they said it must be the Lord who was strong and mighty. It must be the Lord who called him to that position. It must be the Lord who has let him be the way he is. Sure, what they don't understand is that you studied 
them to show yourself approved uh, that the fire burnt some stuff off uh, so that folks that knew who you was uh, can know that God is for real uh, yeah yeah And be the supporting cash. Get out of his lane. Bring him some coffee. Get out of his lane. And just bring him his towel. Get out of his lane. And just pray for him. Because as long as he's good in his lane. All of us. Going to get there at the same time. Have I got a witness. So God said. To Miriam and Aaron. You know y'all did. Ain't it amazing that when you get checked for all of your raggediness, you had a whole lot to say while you were swerving in my lane. But now you get checked for why you're not in your lane. And your blinker ain't saying nothing. Your radio's been turned down. Your fast track has stopped tracking. And now you just, come on here somebody. And it's a trick because when you was in my lane, you was leaning to the side. Listen, 
Now I recognize that I ain't you. Yeah. And I don't got what you got. That's right. Because the word says that God told them that I come to him face to face. Yeah. And if he came to me face to face, then my, my, my lane would be not what his lane is, but it would be something that was conducive to me being able to get that same response. All right. But it wasn't. So watch this. If he could have went to God for himself and got a response, then there would have been a need for him to talk to Moses. Yeah. But ain't it amazing that when you're humble, yeah. the same way that somebody came against you yeah. is the same road that they got to come back to to get from where they were. Come on here. Watch this. Because before they can move on, they have to come and right their wrongs. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that this, when you can hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, mm -hmm. the same people that put their mouth and thought they were better than you, yeah. gonna have to pray that you get them out of the situation that they got in oh, because right. they put their mouth on. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, right. he asked Moses, and Moses, well, Moses could have said, see Moses, we couldn't be Moses. Mm. Especially 2021. <laughs> We're telling them like this. He said, what? <laughs> You want me to do what? <laughs> Why should I do that? <laughs> Why you come at me the way you came at me? <laughs> What's your problem anyway? <laughs> what I have to do to you? And they start crying. <laughs> I've been good to you all the time you've been good. <laughs> it wasn't what? Three days later, I'm still trying to find out. Why you come to me to do something for you? Are you listening? But Moses said this. Moses didn't ask no questions. He said, Father God. <laughs> Forgive them. God turned around and said, listen, yeah. if your daddy yeah. had a spit in her face, yeah. she'd have been disgraced for seven days. Uh -huh. Now listen, leprosy was something that you got and you didn't get rid of until you died. Yeah. He said, therefore, she going to be sick for seven days. Mm -hmm. We know what the number seven means, right? Yeah. In other words, I got to complete something in her that wasn't complete at first. Yeah. So when I send her outside of the city, you put her out there for seven days mm -hmm. and then she can come back. Yeah. Watch this. So because of Moses being in his land, he prayed to the God that met him face to face yes. on behalf of somebody that wronged him. Yes. And God heard his cry yes. and still inflicted the punishment, mm -hmm. but not the same way. Yes. He inflicted it with grace enough to say, listen, put her out there. So she had to take seven days to feel disconnected mm -hmm. and had to learn that my position it's not caught up in how cute I am. Yeah. But my lane is not his lane, but my lane is important. Yeah. I got seven days to think about that. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. She was outside the city. She didn't have the same food. Mm. She didn't have the same covering. Mm. She didn't have the same company. Mm. All she had was her and whoever else was out there for, for the same reason. Yeah. 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 And I want you to understand mm. that depression begets depression. Yeah. Because if you hang around a whole bunch of depressed folk, you will find yourself depressed. Yeah. So for seven days, she sat outside the camp. She sat away from where the Ark of the Covenant was. She sat away from where the power and the glory of God was. Yeah. She sat outside. She had time to think. Yeah. But listen to this. The Bible says that God didn't allow the people to move because it was on a journey. Yeah. Until she came back. Mm -hmm. And watch this. Not only did she come back, but she came back in the same position that she was in when she talked about him in the first place. Amen, amen. Ooh, come on here, somebody. So when God restored her, he restored her and her position. Yes, sir. Because her punishment was for folks to see you ain't going to do what you want to do. That's right. But at the same time, because of grace and mercy, I can put you back in place. Don't test me. All right, amen. All right, all right. What would have happened if Moses had been out of mm. in the wrong lane? <laughs> Miriam would have stayed outside the camp. Amen. Miriam getting back in was all because Moses stayed in his life. Yeah. Amen. And that showed Aaron how to stay in his life. Yeah. And it let Miriam know that I had a head-on collision mm -hmm. with disaster when I got out of my life. Yes, yes. The good thing is, she didn't have all state. Mm. <laughs> she didn't have prudential. <laughs> she didn't have liberty mutual. Yeah. Because those is insurance. Yeah. But what she had was blessed assurance. Oh, right. Ooh, come on, bless yeah. right. yeah. She had blessed assurance. Uh -huh. And when she got back in line, the assurance of God mm. allowed her to know now, I need to do what I do well. Right. Because now I identify my lane. Now I know my reason for my lane. All right. Now I'm accepting the importance of my lane. Yes, yeah. and my lane is just to walk by his side. Yes, and I'm going to walk by his side. Yes, 
because I realize that my lane, mm. your lane, Amen. your lane, your lane, that Romans 8, 28 says, all, mm -hmm. all things work yes. together mm -hmm. for the good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or listen, mm -hmm. he ain't just talking about the things that we're going through yeah. spiritually, but the things that God wants us to do together. Mm -hmm. Everything, mm -hmm. everything works together for the good. Cleanly church. Somebody Amen. got cleanly. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. The bulletin, somebody got to print them. Yes. The microphone, somebody got to write it down. Yes. The media, somebody got to set it up. Yes. The church, somebody got to lock it down. All right. The bills, somebody got to pay. All right. They all work together. Yes. Ooh, Lord. For the good. Yeah. To those who are not only serving, but who are called. So we do it together, we are the call. Yes. And if we do it together, those that need to feel who Jesus is, yes. feel it to our togetherness. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Amen. My question is this. Do you know your life? Yes. Yes. Amen. And then my statement is this. If you don't, don't put your mouth on me. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm at Moses. Mm. I don't know about the friends you're trying to do. I, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm liable to sit up and say, when you think you can do it, go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> Call me with your face. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I had somebody at the other church tell me, Mother, you know, swell up on me one Sunday. I told him, I said, maybe I just go with my. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I said, listen, and, and, and myself, I was like, mm hmm, okay, I'm going to get on. Yeah. This thing falls down to the ground, don't yeah. call me. I'm going to sit down with both those and help pick it up and scoop it up and throw it in the yeah. Yeah. The Lord said, well, Lord, I said, that ain't no shit. Uh, yeah. So I just walked away. He said, oh, all right. Are you listening? Yeah. Because we get those attacks mm -hmm. all the time, trying to get us out of our life. Yeah. Pastor West, yes, sir. don't let nobody make you change your mind. All right, all right. If they, if, look, if they don't want to ride alongside of you, tell them get off at the next exit. <laughs> the next on ramp, God is going to send two cars to the place that That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. See the road? Yes. Don't, don't worry about folks sitting up here trying to dictate our lane. Yes. Guess what? We driving just the way. And if we moving slow, you tell them, that's why they got two or three other lanes. Yes. Go around. Yeah. 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 We like that diesel that's going up that steep mountain. Yeah. Yeah. It's a slow traffic move over to the right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'd rather us go slow and be show. That's yeah. right. And the shift lane trying to move and be like somebody else and that ain't what we're supposed to be. That's right. But if God punishes us, I don't know if he's going to bring us back into the city. Right. Amen? Amen? Especially when he gave us enough warning. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Do you know your lady? Yes. Do you know your lady? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. You are Lord and worthy. We thank you for this time that we've had to share with you. And we ask you, O oh God, that you help us if we're not completely sure what our lane is. That you help us and show us and identify with what that is. So that not only may we get in it, but that we will do it effectively. That we will do it with a spirit of joy and excellence. Knowing, Father God, that it's because of you that we are even there. So we thank you now. And we know, God, that this is a time for us to extend the invitation. So as we ask if there's anyone that needs to know you for the part of their sin, or to rededicate their life, we ask you, oh God, to speak to them if that is them bring them to a better understanding of who you are. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Now there may be someone that may want to accept Christ for the first time or you may want to get your life with you. Just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. And then there may be someone that's looking for a church home. If that's you, and you want to make a seat in your church home. We're glad to be your family. Amen. Amen. If that's you, just raise your hand. See that there is none while there is still yet room. Amen. Let us prepare our minds and our hearts to give for a love offering. Let's be uh, reminded that uh, fifth Sunday, we just want to be our friends and family, invite somebody. Amen. Invite somebody. And also make sure, I need to make sure that I got your sizes for your shirts because I'm making shirts. Okay. Okay. I want to start making shirts like uh, next week. 
uh, in between my vacation split, I'll be out and come back and then I get back on the So I want to get up to you before the fifth Sunday because I don't want you to come to church to change your shirt. All right. I want you to come to church to rock your shirt. Amen. All right. That's right. Amen. That's so right. let us make sure that we get that and I'll get that from Matt this week. Amen. Amen. Our minds clear. Let us prepare to give. Let us prepare.